New York City. Have you ever spotted a red light atop a street light somewhere in the city and wondered about its purpose? Allow me to shed some light on their significance. And feel free to share this video with your friends so that they can discover something new. Decades ago, before the 911 emergency system, the city had emergency call boxes scattered throughout its streets. These boxes connected directly to local police and fire departments. However, a question arose. How would people locate these boxes in the darkness of night? Enter the red lights. All 15,000 of them perched atop streetlights across the boroughs of New York. These red beacons were strategically installed at intersections, guiding the public to the emergency boxes. They might not be directly above the box, they could be found on any corner of the intersection. The aim was to ensure visibility from multiple directions and at a great distance. So if you see a red light without an emergency box beneath it, don't worry. The box is there on one of the four corners of the intersection. Surprisingly, many of these emergency boxes are still functional. Approximately one in every 40 emergency calls in New York City is made using one of these boxes. However, it's worth noting that 9 out of 10 calls from these boxes turn out to be prank calls. You might come across an abandoned box in the city with no red light above it. Chances are that box is no longer in working order. A few years ago, the city removed several lights, likely because the corresponding emergency boxes had become defunct. If you see a working red light atop a street light, you can be certain that a functional emergency box awaits you at that intersection. In a story I'll cover in the near future, these red emergency boxes also played a crucial role in the implementation of the National 911 Emergency Number. On March the 13th, 1964, a young woman named Kitty Genovese had returned home from work in the early hours of the morning. Since in danger, she avoided entering her apartment and instead tried to reach the corner intersection to use the emergency box to call for help. Tragically, she didn't make it. And witnesses who may have seen part of her attack or heard something had no 911 number to call. While Kitty's murder wasn't directly responsible for the 911 emergency number, it served as a catalyst and driving force behind the installation of a national emergency number due to the notoriety of her attack. As I mentioned earlier, I will visit the location where her attack occurred in Kew Gardens, Queens in the near future. If you're familiar with Kitty's story, I urge you to learn more. The New York Times published a story that tarnished the reputation of New Yorkers for decades to come. It wasn't until 50 years after her death, when her brother researched that fateful night, that we learned that most of the initial story in the Times was an embellishment of what truly happened. In 2016, the New York Times finally attached a disclaimer to their online archive story from 1964, stating, Later reporting by the Times and others has called into question significant elements of this account. If you have a chance, watch the documentary made by her brother called The Witness. It will change your perception of Kitty's story. I'll provide a link in the description. So, there you have it. Were you one of the thousands who have asked themselves, what are those red lights for? 
now you know. They are installed to guide the general public in locating emergency call boxes. As I mentioned in the beginning, please share the video with your friends. Many of them will likely exclaim, I never knew that. And do me a favour before the video ends. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Likes and comments really help out small channels like mine get some visibility.